So HTV on acrylic bookmarks does work quite well, but there are a few things that it's just easier to use adhesive vinyl for and that really don't work well with acrylic bookmarks. And I'm going to walk you through the process of creating an entire bookmark, showing you all of the things that I've learned of what to do and what not to do when it comes to making your acrylic bookmark. My name is Kelly Rousseau and let's get clacking. The first thing I take into account when designing my bookmark is the shape of my actual bookmark. So we're going to take our acrylic blank and we are going to measure it. And now this acrylic blank specifically is 4 centimeters across and 14 centimeters down, or just under 2 inches across and about 5 and a half inches tall. But the measurements that you're going to use now are going to be specific to your bookmark. So in Cricut Design Space, I'm going to click on Shapes and add in a shape that best represents this bookmark. This particular bookmark has rounded edges, so I could always just add a normal square or I can go with a rounded off edges square. It's totally up to you. I'm going to pick the rounded off edge square and I'm going to adjust the size to match this particular bookmark. Now, because I need to change the size of the height and the width independently, so I need to make them different sizes, I need to click on the lock proportions button to unlock the proportions. The width here is going to be four, and the height of my bookmark is then going to be 14 centimeters. So you'll see how the space is roughly the same as what I have on this particular bookmark here. Next, I'm going to choose what kind of design I want on my bookmark. I quite like to have a little bit of a solid background so that my bookmark isn't completely see-through, as I find then that the words on the bookmark don't actually pop all that well. So I'm going to go into images and I'm going to search for a paint splash. Now, of course, you can also do this with acrylic paint and you can also do this with adhesive. I wouldn't recommend doing this particular splash with iron-on and we're going to go over that a little bit later. So in the search bar, I'm going to search for splash. And as usual, I will click a few as I'm going along just to add them to my canvas to see what I end up liking. As I find that I often can't really decide on what I want until I actually see it on the canvas on my project. I'm also going to search under swatch as that might come up with some other graphics that I might want to add. And once I have a few, I'm going to add them to my canvas and start working on the background graphic that I might want to use. So I'm going to resize them all. And now I start eliminating things that I might not want. So this one I can see is not going to work for me, but the rest of them might. And even though I might not use them all on this one project, I might actually just keep them on the canvas and hide them for future projects to keep some different options. So I'm going to leave these three on my canvas. I'm going to group them, collapse the group, and then hide them by clicking on the little eye icon so that I can use them at a later stage. I can even drag them to the bottom if I want. This is the one that I want to use for this project, but we can see that the size doesn't quite match our acrylic blank. Even if I resize it, it doesn't quite work. So what I do in this case is I'm actually going to duplicate it and put them on top of each other so that they line up. So it looks like it's a lot longer than it actually is. And because it's a paint swatch, we don't need the edges to be all nice and neat. So I'm going to select them both. I'm going to come down to the bottom, hit combine and weld them together. And now we have a paint splash that's a little bit bigger that works a little bit better on our bookmark blank. We can even stretch it a little bit to make sure that it fits the dimensions a little bit better and covers more of the acrylic blank. And of course, next you can add in whatever kind of sentiment you want to have on your bookmark. I have a couple that I've worked on, so I'm going to show you those. And I will share the link to these designs down in the description. So if you want to use this exact project, you can visit my profile down in the description and use these exact sentiments that I'm showing you. And if you're enjoying this tutorial, please give a thumbs up and let me know what kind of bookmark you are going to create down in the comments. So these are two of the designs that I have to work with, and I'm going to hide the just one more chapter, and I'm going to create the so many books, so little time one. So if I make the acrylic blank white, and I'm just going to change the color just to see what it looks like, I'm going to have the paint swatch in the back, 
and then I'm going to right click and bring the little sentiment to the front and hover that over. I can get a much better feel for what my bookmark is actually going to look like. And now I can start with the fun part of cutting everything out. Before I cut things out, especially when I'm going to be cutting them out of HTV, I like to mirror them on my canvas because I always forget to mirror them on the Make It panel. So it serves as a visual reminder that the things have been mirrored. So I'm going to click flip and flip horizontal. So now I don't have to mirror in the next section. And if you do click mirror, it will then just flip it back to normal again, which you do not want. So if you do it on the canvas, don't do it on the next panel. So I'm going to hide my acrylic blank template as I don't need to cut it. I just want to cut these two little things. So I'm going to hit make it. And this one I am going to be cutting out of HTV, but the paint swatch I'm not going to be cutting out of HTV. I'm going to be using plain vinyl for that section. And I'll show you why once we get to the pressing stage, I find that the results are just better when it comes to using vinyl on the larger sections. But using HTV on the more detailed sections, number one, can be easier to weed because weeding vinyl can be very tricky for some and weeding HTV is often a lot easier. Number two, you have access to different colors. So if there's a particular color that you want, you can use HTV instead of vinyl. And number three, it's just sometimes nice to try something different. It doesn't have any other added benefits. It's just something different that we can do, which is quite fun. So I'm going to click continue, connect to my machine, and I'm going to be using the TechRap Rainbow HTV, which is divine as it's like a metallic color. I love it. And I use the premium vinyl textured metallic setting. They do all come with a little cheat sheet on the actual vinyl itself, which I think is very useful. And if you're wanting to buy some tech wrap vinyl or this particular tech wrap vinyl, the link will be down in the description. And if you use code Kelly at checkout, then you get 5% off your full price order. So why not? So I'm going to load up my vinyl onto my mat, making sure to use any painter's tape to stick anything down if I need to, and using my brayer to make sure everything stays stuck down onto my mat. And then I'm just going to load it up into my machine and cut it. Be sure to come back to check the second mat settings as the other material that we're going to cut is going to be normal vinyl. So once you've cut your HTV, make sure to change the setting on your computer to match whatever vinyl it is that you're going to be cutting. And now that we have both things cut, I'm going to use my weeding tool and weed our adhesive vinyl first, which is the easy one, and then move on to weeding the HTV. Now this one is a little bit more tricky, and what I like to do with this is sometimes hold it at an angle to see what I'm working with, and just pull out all the inside bits first, as I find it makes weeding the rest of it a little bit easier. And then once that's done, you can very easily weed off the rest. And now that that is done, we can take our acrylic blank and tear the cover, protective covering off it. Most places that sell acrylic blanks will have a protective covering on them. So just make sure to tear it off before you get started. I'm then going to line up my HTV section and it's important to remember to do the HTV burst so that you don't melt any of the vinyl or anything else. And I'm going to be using my Easy Press Mini and I'm going to put it on the lowest heat settings. We don't need a lot of heat for this particular HTV. And while that warms up, I like to just give my design a little bit of a once over just to make sure that I've gotten every area and everything looks correct, that it's all aligned. And once you have everything where you want it and your easy press is warmed up, we're going to cover it with a Teflon sheet. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my easy press mini and I like to do it so that the length of the easy press mini is going on the length of the actual bookmark. 
Now this might be a little bit tricky and you may have to go over some sections a few times once you're done, but try not to give too much pressure when you're actually pressing down on it. If you give too much pressure, the glue will actually seep out the edges because it has nothing to sink into. It's on a non-porous surface. So it's on a surface that doesn't have anything where the glue can seep into. So the glue will go out the edges. So if you press too hard, it's not going to look as nice. And I like to just start off with a few seconds and then slowly move it down. And when that's done, what you should do is let it cool off, but also you should place it under something heavy. I don't have anything heavy right here at the moment, so I'm going to let it cool off on the table and under my hands because my hands are pretty used to the heat at this point. <laughs> and make sure you're subscribed to the channel for any other videos that may pop up like this in the future, because I like to experiment with fun things. So now we're gonna see if what we have done, where we have pressed, has worked. You can usually see from the back to see if any edges still need some love, but it's easiest to tell from when you just peel the protective sheeting back. Okay, so we need to do on the little bottom of that M there and on the end of some of these sections. So what I'll do now is just take the easy press and just take the tip of it and just press it to that little area and rub it a little bit so that it gets a little bit of heat there. And then once I've done a little bit of spot pressing, I will start again with peeling it back. And then again, just going back and pressing over any areas that may have lifted. Now generally why this happens is because there's a slight ridge on the end of the actual acrylic from where the laser has melted it. So it, it, there's a little bit of a lip and the easy press doesn't sit 100% flush on the acrylic. So you generally have to just be a little bit more careful with the edges to make sure that everything's stuck. And if you are going to be doing it like this, please be careful about your fingers. The number of times I've burnt my fingers. There we go. So we have the HTV all stuck down. As I promised earlier in the video, I mentioned that I would explain why I prefer to use vinyl on the back as opposed to HTV on both sides. Now, you can, of course, use HTV on both sides, but when it comes to getting a clear look. You can see all of the bubbles and areas where it didn't quite stick or where it didn't really work as well with the HTV. Now what I did with this bookmark was I put HTV on top of HTV. So it is nice because it's, you know, a different feel. But if you also look at the actual bookmark itself, you can see how warped it is and how much it warped because I had to press for so much longer. It's not really the end of the world, but if you are selling them for a profit, you want them to look their best. I tried multiple different methods of applying the HTV onto the back of the bookmark, but nothing really seemed to work. Lower press times, higher press times, higher temperature. So I wouldn't advise using HTV over the entire bookmark. Vinyl still is quicker and much easier for the back of the bookmark, or you can use paint, but then you'll have to seal it. So I would still recommend using vinyl on the back of the bookmark. And now it's time to put the vinyl on the back of the bookmark. I'm actually just using the HTV carrier sheet as the transfer tape, essentially. And what I am going to do is use the wet method because I don't want any bubbles to show through. I'm going to put some water on the back of this, as much water as you want. And then I'm going to place the vinyl down and squeegee the water and any bubbles out. And of course, because we've got water on that's going to stop the adhesion in the beginning, if you don't place it exactly where you wanted it, you can always just pick it up and place it down again. But also try not to touch the back of the vinyl, as that may lose the stick. And what you can do is then just squeegee the water out with your scraper. You'll see how it all comes out there at the bottom. This helps to get rid of any bubbles that may stay underneath your vinyl. Okay. 
And there we can see our bookmark. And it stands out so nicely with the black background, but of course you can go with any color, silver, blue. But with this rainbow foil, it really stands out nicely against the black. And because I don't have any black tassels, I'm going to add on a silver tassel to complete the bookmark. So I'm just using my hooked weeding tool to grab it from the other side. I find that's the easiest way for me. And there we go, our bookmark is complete. But if you want to know how to put HTV on cardstock, check out this video. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe for more Cricut videos in the future. And remember, be kind to someone today. See you soon.